It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for Ten. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for Ten. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl today. Two outstanding elementary schools vying for the chance to move on in our competition. Let's meet the teams right now. First from University Park Elementary, please say hello to Chloe Widman, James Dawson, and Liam Roy. And from Brandywine Elementary, here they are, Gabriela Martinez, Serenity Smith, and Aaliyah Beckles. And now here are the categories of questions we use on the Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green Things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body Systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing, and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's Science Potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. Here on the Science Bowl, we arrange our game board according to question difficulty. The easier questions on the left worth 5 and 10. Tougher ones worth 15, 20, ultimately 25. Toughest question of them all. Both of our teams start out at 50 points. No penalties ever for incorrect answers. Into the two rounds today, one of these two good-looking, talented teams will come back to play our game again and perhaps become the second of our final four in the elementary competition. Let's make sure everything works properly before we start. Let's go to the University Park team. James, would you try your buzzer? Thank you. Good luck to you, to Liam and to Chloe. And Serenity, could you try yours? Looks and sounds good. Good luck to you, to Aaliyah and Gabriella. Are we ready? Yes. Let's do this. Congratulations. Brandywine, you're here for your third appearance, University Park. Congratulations to you. You got a bye in the first round. Let's have a great game. We go alphabetically, B before you. So Brandywine, Serenity, let's play the bowl. Zoo parade for five, please. Zoo parade for five points. Teams, we thought maybe it was bringing news from the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry when this bird appeared in Washington <coughs> University Park. Owl, 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 owl. The snowy owl? The snowy owl, yes. It looked like Hedwig had come to D.C. And the poor thing got hit by a bus but was taken to the zoo and hopefully is on the mend. A very rare appearance for a snowy owl in Washington. Red, James. Green things for 10 points, please. Green things for 10. Teams, the greatest growth in magnitude in the plant kingdom is from the tiny seed that eventually becomes what largest of all green things, serenity. A tree? Be more specific. Uh, an oak tree? Not an oak tree. University Park, from the tiniest seed to what largest of green things reflects the greatest magnitude of growth in the plant kingdom. The redwood tree? The redwood tree, or the giant sequoia, the big ones out there in California. Absolutely right. Go, red. Uh, let's go. Uh, Dateline Science for 10. Dateline Science for 10. Science for 10 points, please. Dateline for 10 points. Teams, if every once in a while you feel like a caveman, you can be excused because 20% of this genetic material in us. DNA, DNA. University DNA, Park? DNA. DNA? DNA, yeah. 20% of our DNA came from the Neanderthals. So if you want to grab a piece of raw meat and eat it, maybe that's what's causing it. Okay, go red. Let's get physical for 10 points. Let's get physical for 10 points. Mm -hmm. Let's get physical for 10 points, please. Let's get physical for 10 points. Teams, this is an interesting question. Unlike an incandescent light bulb, the light that a firefly produces in its abdomen, <laughs> University Park. Bioluminescence. Bioluminescence. Not bioluminescence, no, Brandywine. Unlike an incandescent light bulb, the light produced by a firefly in its abdomen does not lose any of its energy as what? As heat. Heat, absolutely right. Incandescent bulbs are highly inefficient, whereas the cold light that James correctly pointed out is done by bioluminescence does not produce any heat whatsoever. Green, go. Green things for 15. 
Green things for 15, please. Green things for 15 points. Teams, the ovary, the stigma, and the style, the reproductive, the female reproductive parts of the flower, are generally known by this collective term that makes it sound like the plant is packing heat. <laughs> University Park. Yes, sir. The pistol. The pistol. The pistol, absolutely right. Look out, the plant's got a gun. P-I-S-T-I-L is the spelling there. Good, I didn't know if you were going to pull that one out. Good work there with Chloe and Liam. Go, James. Uh, Dateline for 15. Go ahead. Dateline for 15. Dateline signs for 15 points, please. Dateline for 15 is a visual question. Look at the monitor in the studio, please. Teams, back in 1906, the earthquake in San Francisco devastated San Francisco. This woman is standing next to the crack in the earth that caused that earthquake. This is the San Andreas what? Brandy one. Fault line. Fault line, absolutely right. Good teamwork over there on the green side. Go Serenity. Uh, science potpourri for 10, please. Potpourri for 10 points. Teams, the Food and Drug Administration is about to redesign the food label that we see on all of our food that we eat. The serving size is going to be refigured, and the number of these is going to be made more prominent. Yes, calories. University calories. Park. Calories. Calories. Calories, absolutely right. So you know specifically what you're getting and how much is in each serving size, which is larger, projected to be larger than it was before. 90, 75, close game, red. Uh, physical for 10. Physical for 15. 15. Let's get physical. Yes, sir. Let's get physical for 15 points, please. Let's get physical for 15 points. Teams, we know that we have eight, not nine, planets anymore. The largest planets are all the gas giants. The fifth largest planet is this one, University Park. Earth. It is indeed where we're standing right now on planet Earth. Thank you, Chloe, for your help. Go, James. Uh, Popery 15. Popery 15. Mm -hmm. Let, um, Popery. Science Popery for 15 points, please. Popery for 15 points. Teams, these can be found in so many different places in our world. If you find these in rocks, they oftentimes contain ore. If you find them in the leaves of plants, they usually contain water. Minerals. University Park. Minerals. minerals. Not minerals, nope. Brandywine, listen. Again, if you find these in rocks, they oftentimes are filled with ore. If you find them in the leaves of plants, they're usually filled with water. And if you find them in mammals like ourselves, they're usually filled with bluish red blood. Veins. Veins, absolutely right. Veins in rocks, veins in plants, and veins in people. Good. Green. Go. Um, body systems for 10, please. Body systems for, did you say 10 points? Yes. Yes. Please. Body systems for 10. Teams, the hypoglossal nerve connects this fleshy tissue to your brain, so any pain that Miley Cyrus experiences when she sticks it out would be detected there. Serenity. The tongue. The tongue, that's right. Why she sticks out her tongue, we do not know. That's just her shtick. All right, the buzzer says the first round is over. You guys are playing extremely well. Let's look at that tally. University Park, 115. Brandywine, 100. We'll be back with round two in just a moment. Don't you go away. Welcome back to Science Bowl. Thank you for spending part of your day with us. Boy, we've got some great students here today. We expected that. Here we are in the playoff rounds of the elementary schools. We started with 40 back in September. We're almost down to the final four. One of those final four could be one of these two schools. Let's go to University Park, a school that has a winning history on Science Bowl. Many county championships that they can point to. And James, nice to have you here. Tell us about your school. It's in University Park, over mm -hmm. by the University of Maryland there. Who's your principal? Um, Ms. Schickner. Ms. Schickner. And she's a wonderful principal. And uh, the sponsor of your team, Mr. Favero, has been sending us great teams. We've been on the air for 28 years. And I don't know that Mr. Favero has been here all that time, but it is close. And he's just a wonderful guy. And we appreciate all he does. Uh, you have some alternates on that team, James. Can you tell us who they are? Gabriella Holt, sir. Margo Motzak and Orla Collins. Wonderful. And we'll bring all those alternates out later because they're an integral part of this team. Kind of a shadow team you've got out there with Mr. Favero. 
James, there's so many great things about University Park. Can you point to the thing that you brag about the most? Well, at our school, like, everyone's really nice. All the teachers are nice, and all the kids are nice. And it's just a great place to learn and be. A great place to learn and to be. That sounds like a slogan to me. That is just great. I love you. Uh, you're a great wordsmith there, James. Tell me what you hope to do someday. I'm not really sure yet. Yeah, yeah I know I'm you sorry. are still, you're trying to figure it out. Liam's trying to figure it out. The world's such a big, complicated place. What do you like to do in your spare time? I like to swim and I like to read. Yeah, and I know you're a swimmer. You go over to the University of Maryland's uh, swimming pool. And we've got a couple swimmers up here today, I know, synchronized and otherwise. Uh, and I like your shirts, too. And uh, uh, maybe a little bit later on at the end of the show, we'll have them turn around. But they have their names on the backs of those shirts, and uh, they are made specifically for the science ball team. You look great. Liam, nice to have you with us today. And we, we were talking earlier, James's brother has been on this show. Your brother has been on this show, both very successful players. Tell me, uh, how do you prepare for this? I just get my hair ready and take, and we went out to lunch to see before we went here so we wouldn't be hungry. Listen, that's the most important thing. If you come on here, you can't really think about science if your stomach's growling. You know, it kind of puts you at ease. You can chill out a little bit. I think that's a really good strategy. And uh, being nervous is okay, but uh, hopefully you're starting to relax a little bit here. You all look pretty relaxed to me. Liam, what do you do in your spare time? I play violin and I read a lot. Yeah, what do you like to read? Realistic fiction. Realistic fiction, wonderful. And you've played the violin, you told me, uh, three years now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you're part of an orchestra. Yep. That's wonderful. All right, so you're a talented young man, musically, academically. Chloe, you're the synchronized swimmer, aren't you? I'm a swimmer. You're a swimmer, and where do you swim? University of Maryland. All right, and why did you want to be on this show? Well, it seemed like a very fun opportunity to learn lots about science. Absolutely, and to share with us what you know so that we have a good competition, and you're doing that wonderfully. Do you know where you're going someday? What do you hope to do? I would like to be a botanist or either a or a geologist. Yeah. Now, we were talking earlier that you have a garden, which yes. makes sense. What do you grow? I grow tomatoes, basil. Um, this year we started growing asparagus, but that's a longer process. It is, yeah. I grow lettuce and um How do you keep the critters carrots. away from what sounds like a salad bar there? Well, um, my dad puts cayenne pepper to keep away like the squirrels, and, and then we just rinse it off before mm. we eat. So it works, does it? Yes, it, it does works. Work. All right. Well, you're a great player. You're well spoken. Nice to have you with us today. Brandywine, good to have you here. This is your third time this year. You won your first two games, and obviously you've been practicing a lot, Serenity. Yes. Um, yeah. At lunchtime, our teacher, Mrs. Losey, um, we we go with our teacher, Mrs. Losey, and she puts the videos on her computer and connects it to the projector and it shows on the wow. projector. Wow, so you know the kinds of questions we ask. You're very familiar with this game. You play so well here. Miss mm -hmm. Losey, of course, has been sending us great teams like you mm -hmm. for years. You've never made it this far in the competition. Mm -hmm. I know how proud she is of you. Who's your principal down there? Our principal is Mrs. Lee. Mrs. Lee, she is equally proud of you guys. And you have two alternates, don't you, Serenity? Yes. Serenity, who are they? Um, our first alternate is Jalan Harwell, and our second alternate is Esther Papula. Wonderful. We'll bring both of them out with Miss Losey in a few moments. And uh, I know you'd like to be a veterinarian someday, and I lo yes. know you love kids. You want to be a pediatrician. Uh, tell me what you do in your spare time. Um, in my spare time, sometimes I sing, sometimes I write, I draw, or I just watch TV. You're a talented young lady, and I know you love science. You've been doing it all your life, and it really shows here today. Aaliyah, you want to be an oncologist. I know cancer. The prevalence of cancer in this country bothers you a lot. Yeah. And in addition to oncology, you have another interest, don't you? Um, yeah, it's jewelry making. That's jewelry right. Making. You make jewelry, and you're interested in fashion, and you sell your jewelry, don't you? Yes, I do. What do you make? Um, I make bracelets, necklaces, and earrings. Wow. Now, are you wearing anything today that you made? No. Ah, see, you could have advertised today. We could have given you some free advertisement. You're a great advertisement for Brandywine. You're just a great student, and I love your smile. Gabriella, good to have you here today. Tell us the Gabriella story. What do you do in your spare time? Well, sometimes I like to listen to music, and I read books, yeah. and then sometimes I like to sing. Oh, sometimes you like to sing. We have a, a number of musically inclined contestants here today. We won't make you sing. You know, she's over there thinking, please don't make me sing, Mr. Z. I won't make you do that. What do you want to do professionally someday? Well, I want to be a veterinarian. Veterinarian. Now, you have two cats, don't you? Yeah. And they get along together? Yeah. How long have you had them? Um, well, I had Blue for 
two years, I think. Mm -hmm. And then I had Callie. We adopted her last year from that's, the animal shelter. That's very nice. That's very nice. And uh, yeah, sometimes pets adopted from a shelter seem to be more loyal. They just they they are grateful for the opportunity to be in a, in a house, a loving home. Let's get back to our game. Randy won 100. University Park 115. Lots of points. The big points to give away. Let's get back to it. The last correct answer came from Serenity. Start us out. Um, can we have body systems for 15, please? Body systems for 15 points is a multiple choice question. Teams, we have some useless vestigial parts of our body, like the muscles to move our ears and our appendix. Which of the following three body parts is also vestigial and no, no longer wisdom needed? Teeth. Wisdom teeth. Wisdom teeth? Not wisdom teeth, I said it was multiple choice. I'm going to give you three places here. That was a good try, James. Which of the following, the clavicle, the cecum, or the coccyx, is considered a vestigial or useless part of your body? The um, clavicle? Not the clavicle. The clavicle was up here in your, your shoulder area. The cecum is part of your intestine. The coccyx is your tail. We don't have a tail anymore. We have no use for a tail. Try again, green. Um, body system. Green things for 20, please. Green things for 20 points. Teams, Charles Darwin wondered how could plants go from one continent to another and survive? So he put lots of seeds in a jar filled with salt water for months. Then he took them out and planted them to see if they would do what? To see if they would do what, Brandy? One? Germinate. Germinate, that's right. And they did. Good. Go. Green. Um. Zoop rate for 15, please. Zoop rate for 15 points, teams. The reason we don't keep insects as pets is that they're just so strangely different from us. For instance, flies taste with their feet, and grasshoppers hear with ears that are on their what? <laughs> University Park. Knees. 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 Yes, absolutely. The knees on the leg. Good. Go. Red. Okay. Uh, Zoop rate for 10. Zoop rate for 10. Zoop rate for 10 points, please. Zoop rate for 10 points, teams. You know, in this world of ours, we have kings and queens and princes. Well, in the animal kingdom, they have royalty, too. Kingdoms. University Park? Kingdoms. kingdoms. Kingdoms? Not kingdoms, no. Brandywine. In the animal kingdom, they have kings and queens as well. There's the king crab. There's the queen bee. And this largest of penguins makes it sound Emperor. like it rules the Emperor. world. Emperor. Emperor. Emperor penguin is right. Good. Green. Um... Body systems for 20, please. Body systems for 20 points is a visual question. Look at the monitor, teams. After the Boston Marathon bombing last year, many people suffered wounds that led to excessive bleeding. In order to save lives, emergency workers started using these kinds of... Leeches. University Park. Le leeches. 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 Not leeches. Good try. They, as a result of those excessive bleeding wounds, the emergency people started using these kinds of bandages that can be twisted to stop the bleeding temporarily. What do we call those bandages that are now back in fashion among emergency first aid workers? Ace bandages? Not ace bandages, they're called tourniquets. Tourniquets, and you can twist them, and it's almost like turning a spigot to apply pressure. That was a tough question. Good try on both sides. Go again green. Score update, 130. Tie score, all. Oh. Zoop parade for 20. Zoop parade for 20, please. Zoop parade for 20 points. Teams, if you have a phobia about hydrophobia, you can safely handle a possum because of its low body temperature. It does not support brandywine. It does not support um, water. Not water, no University Park. If you have a phobia about hydrophobia, you can safely handle a possum because it has such a low body temperature. The virus that causes the disease, hydrophobia, can't live in its body. Hydrophobia is better known as this. Rabies. Rabies, that's it. Good comeback. Go red. Dateline for 20. Yeah. Dateline for 20 points, please. Dateline for 20 points. Teams, there is a body suit that be, can be controlled by your mind a computer that would, will let a young soccer player who is paralyzed walk at the opening of the World Cup in Brazil. The name of that special uniform that lets that paralyzed boy walk has the same name as the outer armor found on an arthropod. What is that known as, Brandywine? A shell. Not a shell. University Park, what is that outer armor of an arthropod called that is the name of this uniform that will let the paralyzed walk? The exoskeleton? Exoskeleton, good. And the name of the company is called Exo, in fact. Red. Okay, for 20. Okay, 20. 
Okay. Um, science potpourri for 20 points, please. Science potpourri for 20 points, teams. Football is too violent for the players to wear them, but the players on the sideline and the coaches are now starting to wear what wearable computers on their faces. Brandywine. Um, yes, ma'am. I forgot the name of it. Okay, University Park. The wearable computers that people are wearing on their faces, on the sidelines at sports events, even the coaches are wearing them. Do you have any idea? Pass the Liam, please. Liam. Oculus. Google Glass. Google Glass. Go red. <gasps> Green things for 25. Green things for 25. Okay. Um, Green things for 25 points. Green things for 25. The big one in that category, teams. What opposite behaviors does the shoot and the root of a plant demonstrate in response to gravity? Um, one, Serenity. One goes up towards the sun and the other one goes down towards the ground. Absolutely right. Yes. Gravitropism it is. Good. Green. Um, can we have, let's get physical for 20, please. Get physical for 20 points, teams. Your question is as follows. When Alfred Wegener came up with the theory of plate tectonics with continents drifting around the world, he convinced people that what two continents look like perfect jigsaw puzzle pieces, University Park? Um, Africans. Africa and South America? Absolutely right. The two southern hemisphere continents, the biggest ones. Good. Go. Red. Dateline Science for 25 points. Dateline Science for 25 points. Teams back in 1899, it was the company known as Bayer that was able to buffer salicylic acid, which was the first known painkiller and became what kind of tablet those people took to ease a headache? Brandywine. Aspirin. Aspirin, yes, Bayer aspirin, buffered aspirin. Good, Aaliyah, our future doctor, she knew that one. Go green. Um, can we have Zupre for 25, please? Zupre for 25, score update. University Park 190, Brandywine 180. This is Zupre for 25 points. Teams, the reason why most mammals, but not us primates, age so quickly, dying in their teens and 20s, is because this M initial process, which is the sum total of maturity. University Park. Maturity. Maturity. Um, maturity. Not maturity, good try. What M initial process, which is the sum total of all the physiological processes that go in a, on in a, in a body from taking in food to producing energy, it is slower in us primates than in other mammals. Um, the... Uh, Correct answer is metabolism. Metabolism. Try again, green. Um, can we have um, science potpourri for 25, please? Science potpourri for 25, please. Potpourri for 25 points. Teams, while it is relatively common among birds, only 3% of mammals, including the little rodents known as voles, go through life monogamously. Metamorphosis. University Park. Underground. Underground. Underground? Not underground. Good try. It's not uncommon among birds, but among mammals, only 3% go through life monogamously. Meaning how? Yes, ma'am. Um, they go through life by, like... They only have one mate. They mate for life, monogamously. No points. We only have two 25-point questions left. You pick. Green. Um, can we have... Body systems for 25, please. Body systems for 25 points, teams. The high school student that is one of the finalists in this year's Intel Science Talent Search did an experiment on the transplantation of this eye tissue, which is the most commonly transplanted <laughs> tissue in the United States. Brandy Wine. Yes, ma'am. The retina. Not the retina. Good try. What is the eye tissue that is most common, the most common transplanted tissue in this country, University Park? Iris. Iris. The iris? The cornea. The cornea. Go green. Let's get physical for 25. Let's get physical for 25, please. Let's get physical for 25 points, teams. Let's think carefully before you answer. We all know that Roy G. Bibb is the listing of all the colors of the rainbow. And if you see a colored rainbow, that's exactly what you see. If you see a second rainbow, though, the colors are reversed. So what color is now on the outside instead of the inside? Violet. University Park. Violet. Wait, violet. 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 No. Uh, no, not violet. What color is now on the outside instead of being on the inside if that second rainbow is reversal, a reversal of Roy G. Biv? Yeah. Green. Roy G. Biv. Go again, green. Um, can we have Dateline Science for five, please? Dateline for five points, teams. 
A rock that looks like a jelly donut was recently found by opportunity. Which is a what? Randy, why? A rover. A rover, that's right. It's a Mars rover. Go, green. Um, can we have, let's get physical for five, please? Let's get physical for five points, teams. Because it's so hot in Florida, the basketball team is called the Miami Heat. Thunder? Thunder! I was going for Oklahoma City. You read my mind. Good. Red. Thank you, Chloe. Oh, the buzzer has just rung. It looks like our game is over. We'll double check that score and come back in just a moment. Don't go away. Engineers Without Borders USA answers the call with more than 225 university and professional chapters from a wide spectrum of disciplines. With more than 400 sustainable engineering projects in more than 45 countries, our organization is changing the world. If you would like to find out more about how you, too, can change the world, visit www.ewb-usa.org and click Get Involved. Engineers Without Borders USA. Building a better world, one community at a time. <laughs> Did you know 80% of the world's fur comes from fur farms in China? On these farms, animals live their entire lives in small wired cages. They are exposed to harsh weather extremes, Many animals go insane from confinement. Others suffer and die because of untreated wounds and disease. The unlucky few who survive are bludgeoned to death, have their skulls bashed in, and their skin removed, many while still conscious. There are no laws to protect them, but you can help. Sometimes it's what you don't do that helps the most. Please don't buy fur or fur trim. Contact In Defense of Animals for more information. Thank you. I can have text all night long, but not when I'm driving. What's the point of texting me about a party that you might not make it to? I don't text and drive. Do you? Do you? Do you? Did you say text or sex? Hey, I got an idea. As long as you're texting, why don't you write your own obituary, dumb I don't text and drive. Do you? We don't text and drive. Do you? Brought to you by Rad and Terry Fader. This holiday season, don't let your friends text and drive. Party! Yeah. Welcome back. A closer game we could not have imagined. It testifies to the skill of these two great teams. Six great players came down almost to the last question. Our final tally today is Brandywine 185, University Park 195. Congratulations to this blue team over here. And you guys jumped in real fast a couple times and you lost points, but you hung in there. And Oklahoma City Thunder. They ought to get a thank you note from Chloe. Absolutely. Congratulations to Chloe, James, Liam, and back there are alternates. Uh, Margo and Gabby and Mr. Fabero. congratulations to you. Brandywine, let's see those wonderful smiles you got. You gave us the best game we could have expected. Aaliyah and Serenity and Gabriella, I want you to come back. You've played a wonderful game. And look at the shadow team back there. We've got Dania and Esther and Jalon and Miss Losey. Thank you for being here for all you do, and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on another edition of Science Bowl. Bye-bye.